This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're at a Coliseum and the crowd's going wild because we're going to be racing our horses in a chariot. So today we're talking about Chariot Race. Uh, this is designed by Matt Leacock and it's for two to six players. Now, I'm going to show you how the game's played and then I'll see you on the side for my final thoughts. In Chariot Race, you're trying to be the first person to do two laps. And you do this by rolling and re-rolling dice and managing your speed, your damage, and your fate. Now the first thing you do is on your turn is if your damage is higher than your speed, meaning, or lower than your speed I should say, then you would have to bring your speed down to where your damage is because in this case, you, would, you can't go faster than your damage. So that's always the first thing you do. But at the beginning of the game, you actually have a full range of, of items here. So like this. Now, let's say uh, we have this. And depending on where you are with the speed, that's how many dice you can roll. Because when you're going slower, you have more control and you have more options to you. As you're going faster, you have less control and less options to you. Let's just say the, the game had gone on for a little bit. And let's just say I'm up to something like this, seven and nine damage. And in this case, I would only be rolling four dice. Now, the first thing I could do is after this, after I've adjusted possibly my initial speed for damage, in this case, I don't have to, I'd roll the four dice. Now I have one free reroll. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to reroll any dice I want, and I'm gonna reroll this. Now, uh, if I want to, I can then spend two fate to either reroll as many dice as I want, or to take any one die and put it to anything that I want. So in this case, I'll spend two fate. I'll go down to one, and I'm gonna turn this one to this. It's gonna let me go faster. Also, if I had enough fate, I can spend three fate to heal two damage. But in this case, let's do this. This allows me to increase my speed or decrease it by one. This allows me to increase it by two, but I get one damage. So I'm gonna ask to increase it. So I have increased by one, two, three. So I'm gonna go from seven, to 10 on my speed, uh, but I'm gonna take one damage. So I'll come down to here to eight. Uh, this allows me to change a lane and this allows me to do some attacking I'll show you in just a moment. So with all these here, let's do this. I'm gonna go 10 in a straight line and I can change lanes once. So let's say I was actually coming through my second lap here and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna use my lane change. You always go forward, eight, nine, 10. Now I went 10, I used my one lane change and I went through a seven. My speed 10 minus the seven is three, I take three more damage. So in this case, I'd go from eight, seven, six, five, I'd go down to five damage. So next time I'm actually gonna get, uh, I'm gonna have to bring my speed all the way down here to five to start, which will give me five dice. Now, because I have this javelin, I can do one of two things. After my movement, if there's somebody within two spaces in any direction, I can hit them and they take one damage. Or I can use, use the cube as a caltrop and put it on any space that I went through. I can't put it on my starting space. I can't put it on the ending space. But let's say I put it right here. If somebody hits that, it gets discarded and they lose a damage. That would be my turn. And then the rest of the players will go. This player would go next. Then this player, then this player. It's always the furthest up. And then you go in turn order to the least every round. Everyone else will take a turn the same way. The only die I didn't show you is this. For each one of those, you get one more fate. As you saw, you can spend them to cure damage or manipulate dice further. That's pretty much how the game's played. If you get all the way down to zero, you're out of the race. The first one to finish two laps wins. If more than one player did it in the same round, whoever went further wins. There's also a little bit of crashing. So if this player was going three in a straight line, they'd go one, two, three, they'd both take two damage. If he was going two, he'd go one, two, they'd both take two damage and he would slide back. And that's essentially how crashing works. There's a B side of the board that has these different obstacles. If you hit them, you're out of the race immediately. There's also a backside to all of the boards and now everybody is different. They have different uh, speed uh, you know, heights. They have different dice, the ranges are different. So everybody has a different chariot. Now, anytime Matt Leacock comes out with a game, I'm gonna be in interested in it right away because he's done a lot of games that I love. And I also love sort of family lighter weight games and I like racing games. 
Now racing games typically come in two different fashions, sort of a dice driven or a card driven. This one goes down that dice path and it uses mechanisms similar to other games where you roll and re-roll, like Yahtzee or King of Tokyo and things like that, where you get a free re-roll. In this game, you gotta spend more to re-roll more, change dice. So there are some decisions to make after you roll. It's, do I speed up? Some of them I can choose speeding up or speeding down. Um, and then you get to re-roll and figure out what you want to do. Do I want to use my fate to get my damage back up or manipulate the dice some more? So you do have some decisions to make, uh, but the game didn't quite blow me away as what I hoped it would. For me, it sort of was average for me. Uh, the decision making was there, but yet sometimes I really didn't feel like I had as much control. I feel like it gave me the illusion of a lot of control, um, but it didn't really feel that way. With five or six players, it's just too much downtime. You're sitting there, you're waiting for other people to roll, you're waiting for them to what to think, you're waiting for them to count up spots, you're waiting for them to figure out the right alternative move. Are they gonna move one? Are they gonna re-roll this lane change? There's definitely a lot of thinkiness that goes into your turn, and with five or six players, there's too much downtime. Uh, four is very good. Uh, two and three, uh, you play with more than one chariot, so that's fine too. Uh, now, when I say very good, I mean for the game, it's probably a better player count. But the game in general, again, nobody that I played this with was over the moon about it. Nobody was blown away about it. It wasn't a bad game, but at the same time, it didn't do anything to really stand out from the rest. Uh, and it definitely doesn't stand out from the other games that Matt Leacock has designed. So I was a bit surprised and a bit disappointed. Uh, but if you like racing games and this looks interesting to you, then it might be one you want to check out. But as racing game goes, as dice rolling goes, I didn't feel like the decisions were quite interesting enough and i didn't feel like i had quite enough control and in the end it just didn't gel the way i hoped and that is chariot race this video was sponsored by miniature markets review corner the review corner features podcasts video and written game reviews by gamers for gamers miniature market the online gaming superstore thousands of board games discounted prices check them out at miniaturemarket.com I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.